Hello everyone. This week I spent a lot of time working on enemies and I laid the groundwork for the enemy AI system. I don't have a lot of enemies yet, but the logic behind is very expandable, so I think I'm in a good position there. I made this little chaser enemy. He basically will activate and track you when you get closer, and when you get even closer he will start to chase you. And he does damage to you, but currently nothing happens if you run out of life points yet. And I will also try to expand that spherical enemy I had before. He has a different pattern. My idea is that he will chase you for a while and then turn into kind of like a land mine, a space mine if you want, and just expand so that that will be a damaging sphere. And if you ignore them and focus on other enemies, then they could catch you. And another thing I added were some guided rockets. I have an idea of an enemy that has a, some missile pods on its back, and he would move back a bit and then shoot his missiles and then come closer again. So I needed the missile model and some missile pod logic. So that is what I, what I added this week. So you can see those red cubes in the distance. They are currently representing my rocket spawner, my missile pods, and as soon as I get close to them, a certain distance, they will start spawning rockets that after a certain amount will begin targeting the player. So you can see this in action when I get a bit closer. The first two are in range, and you can see at first they go up until a certain range, and then they start to target me. And I can shoot the missiles. And they have a cooldown as well, those rocket pods. So after, currently it's set to 10 seconds, they will spawn new ones. And they can also collide with me and then cause damage. So we can make a whole lot of them spawn. And I also did this as a bit of a performance test. So I ran some, some tests earlier where I spawned a whole lot of rockets. So these are 18 spawners. And it seems to run just fine. And for the model of the rocket, you can see that I added some emissive materials. So they have a red dot on the front, and that was so that you can see them coming at you, even if there's no light. And they also have a little engine glow in the back, just because I think it looks, looks quite cool. And well, they're not particularly aerodynamic, but they are in space, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Also, I wanted them to be very easy to see and for the player to be able to target them quite easily. But the majority of time this week, like I said, I spend on setting the groundwork for the enemy AI, for the behavior. In general, there are two approaches to doing enemy AI, to modeling what appears to be intelligent behavior using strictly logic, which a computer does, which you would do in code. My enemies will have a state machine, which means that they will always be, each enemy will always be in exactly one state. For example, the little chaser enemy, he will be either inactive or he will be active but idle. That is the point where he's just tracking you. Or then he can be actively chasing you. And of course, I could add more, and these will be different depending on the enemy. This rocket pod has only two states, which is inactive and launching rockets. But then again, each state has a lot of other consequences that come with it. For example, with this rocket pod, when it's in the launching rockets mode, we don't want it to launch a rocket every frame. All the functions in the game generally update once a frame, and we're running at 60 frames a second. Well, actually, we're running more at 185 at the moment, if I look at my little monitor. So we don't want our engine to spawn 185 rockets a second, or even with a fixed time step, 60 times a second. Instead, we wanted to run a, a counter, a little cooldown, so that they will spawn every fixed time interval that we set. So in this case, 10 seconds before new ones spawn. And so that means that if you wanted to code this in a type of logic, you need to consider the state that the enemy is in, as well as have additional restrictions, like a timer, for example. And you have some options to do this. Either you can implement it right there with a state, so you would have a bunch of conditional statements in your code and then do a certain thing regarding that. 
And so this approach works quite well for very simplistic enemies. Earlier this week I was playing the expansion to Super Mario 3D World, Bowser's Fury. Then right after I finished that I started to play Hollow Knight. I didn't get very far yet, but it has a lot of enemies that are quite simple to describe. If you look at the original Super Mario Bros, the enemies in that game all have very distinct and very simple behaviors. So for example the Goombas or Green Koopas, they only walk in one direction. They have a position at which they start and then they just walk in one direction. The only condition basically is if they hit a wall, they will turn around. If Mario gets hits them, that's damage and I would consider that to be somewhat separate from the logic. And then the other condition is if they fall into a hole, so if their Y position, if Y is the vertical screen coordinate, if their Y position is below a certain amount, they will just die. You don't need to check for whether they fall into a hole or not, because you can just check their height. And this works very well for these very simple enemies. And even if you think of enemies in that game that have a little more behavior, for example the Red Cooper, it will also stop at the edge of a platform and not just fall down. But that is also very simple to do and you could imagine writing that logic all in one block, like I explained earlier, depending on which state they are in or which conditions are met, they would change certain parameters. Maybe they don't even have a state, they are so simple. And in Hollow Knight, a lot of the enemies were just about as simple as that. But then if you look at the enemies in Bowser's Fury or most modern 3D games, they're a lot more complicated. So Goombas in that game, for example, or in Mario Odyssey, they will patrol a certain area. They will not remain stationary and they will not always walk an exactly fixed path or direction. They will more wander around a bit. And then if Mario gets close to them, they will start to chase him. Quite similar to that enemy I designed actually in behavior, just that they have a bit of a patrolling pattern as well. And a lot of games have enemies with even more complex behaviors. The enemies in Elden Ring, for example, will act differently when they have spotted you or when they haven't yet. Once he spots you, this guy, for example, will blow his little trumpet and call for reinforcements and then start attacking you whereas some of his friends will just immediately start attacking you. And you can see that even though initially this guy does something differently, afterwards they all do the same thing. So in essence, there's a lot of logic that can be shared. Once you are in a certain state, you could then go through a set sequence of instructions or conditions in a tree-like fashion. The approach I ended up for my characters is that they have one state each and then for each state they have a behavioral tree that will further define their actions and what they do. And so with this approach I can reuse a lot of code, for example targeting and, and moving towards the player or shooting at the player or these kind of things, finding cover, these kind of things I can reuse. Whereas I, I'm still very flexible with which states I give each enemy and when these states trigger, which makes it possible for me to make a lot of different enemies using the same building blocks. So this rocket spawner and the chaser enemy use the same logic and they have some components that they share and others that they don't, which makes it very easy for me to make the enemies because the process of creating them is always the same and the building blocks work interchangeably. So I don't need to worry about breaking anything at least on the code side. Of course, I can still make something that doesn't make sense, but at least it will not break my game. Thank you for watching.